concerns about the, uh, the wording of the statutory interest, in, instrument published by you this afternoon, Minister. It appears to contain some pretty vague language which could have serious consequences uh, for the established online freedoms uh, in Ireland. It appears to give the courts an o open-ended power to grant orders against internet service providers without uh, setting them any instructions by way of legislation which basically will set the boundaries. Let me say at the outset, both I and the vast majority of people who have contacted me uh, recognise uh, that artists have a right, uh, an absolute right to profit from their work. So let's park that one there. However, that's only part of the issue here. Under the current wording, a court may seek to block any site where any user has so much as linked to any infringing material. It leaves it entirely up to the courts to decide the grounds under which um, it, it, in, 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 under which uh, an injunction may be granted. We are abdicating a responsibility here by not um, in, introducing primary legislation. This is not about, Minister, and I don't doubt you, your, your intent, your personal intent. It's not what um, you intend. It's what you're enabling the courts to do. The very vagueness may well mean that we end up with laws by stealth that resemble uh, the now toxic, toxic soap approach which was so resisted in the United States. Uh, the key thing here is that we must be, uh, this must be enacted through the primary legislation. We must give the courts something to interpret. It's our jobs, job to, to um, uh, obviously to introduce legislation that lays the groundworks. It's also important, and it's really important, Minister, in relation to our international reputation, in relation to the whole area of technology. Can you confirm that the proposed wording, under this proposed wording, that no injunction could be taken against uh, companies like Google, eBay, Facebook or Twitter? Google alone uh, employs 4,000 people in this country. This um, controversy has already been posted on wired.co.uk, one of the most referenced websites in the world. Tech companies read the Deputy should conclude, please. Okay, uh, we are constantly told to be conscious of our, our reputation um, you know, in relation to the money markets. This is a really important area for us. I know you know that, Minister, and I'm really concerned about the vagueness of this language and the, in, and the, the powers that are being transferred to the courts. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy. Deputy Larry Keaton, the Deputy is two minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Cahirlik, and, and thank you, Minister, for, for coming into the House today. This is an important issue, and I think at the outset it's fair to say that there's considerable confusion out there, and I think this gives us the opportunity of clarifying and putting at ease people's minds. This uh, ACTA agreement is seen to be an international version of what is the controversial uh, SOPA bill. Now, while the proposition, I believe, aims to tackle counterfeited goods, start-up and even longer-term established online business could potentially suffer. And with such a broad range of images, videos and even tracks potentially deemed on copyright infringement, does the Minister have a plan in place that may provide assistance to parties and that might help them? And I want to ask the Minister, does the, the, he consider how such a proposition could potentially hinder or even set back our IT industry in, in Ireland? And with such um, you know, a, a requirement and dependency you know, on our tourism industry, on our IT sector, uh, on business and sport, and even the social media. This is an area that where people feel we need protection and we need clarification, and I think that's the opportunity that we're presented with today. And thank you. Thanks, Deputy. Uh, Minister State, Deputy Sean Sherlock has four minutes. Thank you, um, uh, uh, Cahir Look. Uh, first of all, to confirm to both deputies that this is not uh, SOPA legislation. Uh, absolutely not. Um, what this is, is a restatement of what the Irish government held to be the case anyway in relation to copyright. You had the Charlton judgment, which was the uh, EMI versus UPC case. The Charlton judgment held that Ireland uh, was not ad idem, if you will, or in line with the EU uh, copyright directive. And so as to put us in line with that judgment, we are now moving to implement a statutory instrument that will uh, give voice to that particular judgment. The Copyright and Related Acts 2000 was implemented uh, in this state, but every single member state has the right 
uh, in line with EU legislation that gives the right for a party where there's a perceived infringement of their copyright to seek an injunction. And we held, because we were not a party to the chart and judgment, we held that prior to that, that we were in line or with that legislation. Sir, speech, will there be a speech available? I don't have a speech uh, okay. here, look. Okay. Um, so we held that we were in line with EU legislation, but when the justice chart and judgment was issued, uh, we felt it was best so as to remove any doubt uh, we, that it, we felt it best to restate that position, the position of the original Copyright Act. And that is what is before us today, an amendment to that Act to ensure that we are in line with that judgment. Every member state has the right uh, to, uh, we'll say, go for an injunction, if you will, where there's a perceived breach of copyright. But in recognising that, or before any judge makes a decision, the judge has to now have regard to the fact that the e-commerce directive clearly states that there are rights inherent within the Charter of Fundamental Rights, for instance, which gives the right to freedom of expression. There's the right within the copyright directive to, you know, a, an internet service provider to be able to conduct a business. and the right for ordinary users to be able to use the internet freely and openly. And we would not seek to uh, prejudice that in any way. I'm a Minister for Research and Innovation. We fund, this state funds new technologies, the development of web-based technologies to the tune of millions on an annual basis. And we're, and we're very conscious of the need to ensure that we can continue in that vein. So, I take the point that Deputy Murphy is making about the abdication of responsibility. What, what I would respectfully suggest to Deputy Murphy is that what we now need to see in Ireland, and this I hope will force the issue, is there has to be a dialogue or an engagement between the internet service providers on one side, the copyright holders on the other side, and there's a space in between where you have a, a very highly active internet, web-based community, they need to come together and, and they need to sit down with each other to try and chart a way forward. Because I'm not, personally, I am not averse to the idea of primary legislation. But we still have to, no matter what way we move on this one, we still have to have regard to the chart and judgment. Now, I don't see how, if, you, if the state, prior to the chart and judgment, already held that you know, a person could seek infringement proceedings where they perceived a breach of copyright and no sites have closed down as a result of that. And we are only merely restating that which is in the Copyright Act anyway, or adding to it, then, you know, it, it's logical to assume that there will not be a move to close down further websites. I don't believe that we should, in the longer term, I, uh, I do apologise, Cahir, look, and I, I suppose it's, it's an issue that probably warrants more time, but I, I can come back in again if, if that's okay. okay. Deputy Murphy. Definitely warrants more time, and basically, Minister, you know, in the programme for government, it, it says explicitly that there's, uh, that it's not intended to, that it's intended to have um, you know, primary legislation when you're, when you're dealing with EU regulations. Now, I mean, this is not happening here. Um, the second thing is that, I mean, a debate is urgently needed on the, uh, here. And I, I mean, we've already had, if you like, an email storm on this. Well, we're about to have a hurricane storm if people are not satisfied uh, about what's happening in, in, in relation to this. It seems to me that there's a certain contradiction in some of the things that you've been saying. On the one hand, uh, you, 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 what you wanted to do was you didn't want the courts to enforce potentially, you know, unlimited blocking of web, websites. Yet, on the other hand, you wanted to, the, the, the court to be able to grant injunctions uh, which would block a, a site in its entirety. That's my understanding of it. Um, uh, the, uh, look, uh, the, there's a sense that this, uh, Minister, this, there, there is a sense, and I don't want to be, I don't want to confuse an issue any further, but there is, there is, there is a very important and strong need to have this complete clarification before any statutory instrument is signed, because this um, has 
the potential of, because of its vagueness, this has the potential of, of, of doing damage. Or it may well be that if there is a sufficient time to have a debate, a question and answer ses session, that a lot of these things could be properly teased out. Cool, um, and I've got to say, if this topical debate is the, the start and end of, of the debate, it will be absolute. Um, it, it would be absolutely uh, deficient. We need to have a debate, and we need to have a debate. Uh, within the next week on this. Deputy Keaton, Deputy Keaton has a minute. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, again. Um, yes, I do believe this does warrant more time, and I know you have very little time to discuss this today, but you might, Minister, consider how we could have a, a, a more extended debate on this issue. And also, I think, in, in, in the days and weeks ahead, Minister, you might consider how we could avail of the opportunity of informing more people uh, and, and putting people's fears uh, <laughs> Uh, particularly people in industry, particularly people in business, particularly people in education, and people who avail of the services in the social network. There is a, a huge concern here. Perhaps some of it is because of mis misinformation, but I do think we need to avail the opportunity of putting people's, uh, allaying people's fears. Thank you, Minister. Minister, two minutes. Thank you. Um, if I go back to the point that's made, and, and that is that no national authority or court uh, can require an internet service provider to carry out general monitoring of the information that it transmits on its network. So that gives rights to the internet service provider and it gives rights to the individual IP address or the individual user. Okay? This means that the ISP cannot be asked to monitor all of the data of each of its customers in order to prevent any future infringement of intellectual property rights. So that's clear, that's in EU law. What we're trying to do here is to balance the right of the copyright holder and transpose that which is already in EU law and recognise then the rights of the individual user, the individual business uh, and, 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 and not to limit the freedoms of the internet. Nobody wants to limit the freedoms of the internet. It, it is counterintuitive. We live in a democracy and we thrive on the businesses that we create in this country through state intervention and state subsidy to support those types of businesses. But the key thing here is that as long as the business model that pertains to the music industry, for instance, uh, which is increasingly and arguably becoming, I won't say outmoded, but it is evolving, as long as it's a case of never the twain shall meet, then no matter how you legislate, primarily in this field, as soon as you legislate, the internet of its very nature will evolve in a way to circumnavigate that. That is why it is my view as a minister that if the stakeholders, uh, if the stakeholders come together in a, an organic fashion, if you will, and if they sit down, and they must sit down, because if they don't, then no matter what government is here, a minute. they will never be able to legislate for this issue. Because the internet, as we know, is, you know, given the level of act, uh, activism on the internet, which we welcome, uh, given the level of innovation that pertains to it, no one member state, no one, you know, geographical boundary can, can set laws to try and control it. And I, I, I think we all uphold to that view to a certain extent. I think we take a liberal view in the main in relation to the power of the internet and its inherent good in that sense. But we still have to, as a member state, we still have to have regard to copyright law because anybody that generates intellectual property has a right. But that right, Cahir Luck, is not superior to the right uh, of the internet service provider or it's not superior to the right of the individual user. So in deciding this, when governments go to legislate on this, they must Conclude be very careful of this. And uh, look, can I say to Deputy Murphy uh, uh, you know, and, and Deputy Keating that I, I, I will engage further on this one. I'm happy to do so. We will be implementing the statutory instrument. I'm going to be very straight with the Deputy about that. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it is imminent. I, I can't give you an exact time. There is a note to go to Cabinet, as I understand that. Before the statutory instrument is uh, signed. Well, can I ask the Deputy, or if, if, if I can defer sure. to her on that through the Whip's office, if that's okay. okay. Um, but 
I mean, really, the central point here, though, is that those people within that community, they need to start coming together. And the ISPs and the music industry people, they need to sit down with each other. Because it's, you know, they've been really tinkering around the edges of this one for a long time. Ireland needs to take a strategic view as to how it pitches itself yes, so we have in terms to of legislating for this. And, Cahir, look, I do apologise okay. for going over time. Sorry. Okay, thanks. This is a complicated